let's move on to the identity of the self. Northoff digs deep into how the self can be investigated neuroscientifically. He first addresses the philosophical roots of belief and non-belief in the self, acknowledging that it has become an accepted modern perspective that the self is an illusion in consciousness. However, if the self is not of some neuro-philosophical significance, it ought to be processed the same as all other content in the brain. Northoff reminds us that several psychological studies have shown that self-related content is more heavily weighted in memory, emotion, and sensory motor response. This is referred to as self-reference effect. To test the impact of self-reference effect on the brain, Northoff states, and I quote, we can compare self and non-self specific stimuli in the scanner and investigate the underlying brain regions that respond. The results of these tests show that the brain areas involved in neural processing of self-specific stimuli are areas of the middle of the brain, specifically the perigenual anterior cingulate cortex, the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, the dorsomedial prefrontal cortex, the posterior cingulate cortex, and the precuneus. These are called cortical midline structures. Northoff admits though, and I quote, how and why the specific physiological features of the cortical midline structures are transformed into mental features remain unclear." End quote. One very interesting finding in Northoff's research is that, and I quote, various investigators have demonstrated neural overlap between self-related processing and resting state activity levels, in that the former did not elicit changes in the latter. So despite the weight that self-related content is given in memory and emotion, this did not increase the activity in the intrinsic resting state areas that Northoff identifies with the neural predisposition of consciousness. He explains it this way, and I quote, you would think that the brain encodes high personal relevance items in commensurately high activity changes so that the self-specific stimuli stand out when compared to non-self-specific ones and to the rest of the brain. That's the way you experience yourself. You stand out in the environment when compared to others. You would consequently expect your brain to do the same, to make the self stand out with high activity changes. That high activity change though does not seem to be the case. Rather, the opposite holds true. Yourself, the basic subjectivity of your experience and consciousness, does not seem to stand out at all. Rather, overlaps with your brain's ongoing resting state activity." End quote. Northoff exclaims the significance of this to philosophical inquiry. He states, What was long considered the pinnacle of the mind, self and subjectivity, seems now to be located at its very bottom, in the resting state activity of the brain. Self or subjectivity is an intrinsic ingredient of the brain itself and its intrinsic activity. Brain and intrinsic activity are, by default, subjective and cannot avoid constructing some kind of self. This is a radical thesis that reverberates deeply into neuroscience and its view of the seemingly purely objective brains, as well as into philosophy and its view of subjectivity as the province of higher mental states.